Hey guys, in today's video, we're going to be working with line charts in Swift, and we're going to be doing all kinds of things to line charts in a Swift app. So let's check out what we're going to do in today's video. So first of all, I'm just going to check out the library we're going to be using in order to create line charts, which is called the Swift UI Charts Library. Then we'll check out what we're going to be doing in today's app and the use cases of Swift UI Charts Library. Then we'll get straight into the demo, in which first we'll just do a regular line graph, and then we'll add some attributes and parameters to the line graph to make it look a little bit different. And then finally, we'll do a thing called a multi-line graph, where it has multiple lines on our line chart. So first of all, let's check out what the Swift UI Charts Library is. So Swift UI Charts is a library created by just an anonymous user, but it's created so that you can make your own charts in iOS. And it's actually had another update, which is version 2, in which it added another chart, but that's for another video. So for now, the supported charts are line charts, which are what we're going to be doing today, and then bar graphs and pie charts, which I'm going to be doing in another video. And the most important thing that distinguishes SwiftUI charts from all the other charting libraries is that it supports lots of attributes and configurations so that you can change your own data, you can change the variables, you can change the parameters, the colors, the gradients, all of that stuff. And we're going to be checking that out in today's demo. So now let's check out the other types of charting libraries. So in today's video, we're using Swift UI charts, but there are also other types of charting libraries. So obviously first we have Swift UI charts, but there's also the charts library, which is Swift's charting library, which doesn't have as many features as Swift UI charts, but it does the job. Then there's Swift charts, which is made by another anonymous user, but is also very popular. And then finally, we have the iOS charts API, which Apple created itself or Apple developer. So now let's check out what we're going to be doing in the demo or today's app to create some line charts. So the first thing we're going to do is do some installations so that we can actually get Swift UI charts into our Xcode. Then we'll do multiple different types of charts. So first we'll have just a regular line chart graph. Then we'll do multi line graphs, which have multiple lines. Then we'll do attributes and styling so that it looks way different and looks much better. So let's get into the demo in which we'll make an iOS app for line charts. All right, so let's get into the demo. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Xcode, obviously, and I'm just going to say file, new and project. So you can't see this right now, but uh, on the top, I'm saying file, new and then project so that it'll create us a new project. And then let me drag this over so that you guys can see. And then we want a regular app because we're not going to apply any template to this. This is just going to be a simple app where we create line charts. And then I'm going to say next. And then for the name, I'm going to say line chart demo. And then I'm just going to create this into my folder. And I'm just going to press create. And then there we go. So now it's created us a Xcode project. And I forgot to mention this, but we're using Swift UI instead of the storyboard app. So we're using Swift UI so that we can actually code all of the elements instead of adding them into our main.storyboard. So here I'm going to take out this text and then instead of that, to put all of our elements inside, I'm going to put a v stack here and then now we can add all of our elements inside this. And if you don't know about Swift or Xcode and you're a beginner to this, then I have another video on Swift and Xcode introduction. So link in the description for that. And now what we can actually create our first line chart. But before we do that, we have to import all of the code or installations. So like I said, Swift UI charts is created by a user on GitHub. So I'm just going to go to his repository here. So here we have the repository. This repository link will also be in the description. So it's called app pair slash chart view. So chart view is the repository. So then here, like I said, the version two is here. And then there's a whole documentation all about this. So if you want to check out everything, the line charts, bar graphs and pie charts, then I really recommend you to read this uh, little article that it has in the GitHub. And then here's all the code. So I'm going to copy this link and then I'm going to use that for the installation. 
So I'm going to say file in Xcode, file, and then Swift packages down here, add package dependency. So this is how you can add a package from the internet into our code, into our Xcode code. So then I'm going to paste in the GitHub repository and then press next so that now it'll get the repository and all of the code inside of that repository so that we can use that. And then I'm going to press next and then finish. And there we go. So now if we go back to the content view, it's the same. But if we go to our project, which is line, line chart demo, then here in packages, you can see it says one item. And then we have Swift UI charts as our one package. So there we go. We've successfully installed our package, which is Swift UI charts. Now, just like in Python, we want to import it. So import Swift UI charts. And there we go. So now we're completely ready to create our first line chart. So let's get into it. All right, so in my VStack, I'm going to use a function which is to create a line chart. So it's called line chart view. So this line chart view function will just create us our line chart view. But a line chart has to have some sort of data because it has to have the data to go up or down. So then inside of this, I'm going to add a data parameter. And then for the data, we need to have it in an array because obviously it's going to like, we need multiple data. Uh, we need more than one just data. So let's just say one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's say seven. So now we have seven data points. So it should just keep on going up in our line chart. So Swift will know if it's going up or down and how much it should go up, how much it should go down, just like a regular line chart should have. And then finally, the only other parameter that's required is the title. So then inside of this, we just add any title we want, and then it'll show up there. So let's say first line chart, simple. And then let's save that. So the data and title parameters are inside of this line chart view function so that we can create a very simple small line chart view. And then now inside of the data, we'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it should just like keep on going up like a staircase. And then as the title, we have first line chart simple. And obviously there's much more parameters and attributes that we can add and we will add those in the demo. And we will add those later. But for now, let's just run this. So I'm gonna run it on a simulator. So let's say iPhone 12 Pro Max, just cause it's the newest one. Then let's press run. And it says build succeeded, there we go. And then on simulator, it's running here. So let me just drag that over. And if you don't know what a simulator is, it's basically like an iPhone, except it's still on the computer. So it simulates what an iPhone would look like so that we can run our apps on the simulator instead of having to actually get a phone. And there we go. So while I was talking, it ran. So here we have our line chart. And as you can see, we have our title, which is first line chart simple. It cuts off a little because it's small, but there we go. And it says up 14%, which we can change that, but that's just the default value. And then, like I said, it's just staggering up. So if you estimate it's this would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there we go. And then as you can see, it's applied a little bit of color so that it looks nice. And one cool feature that is applied only in Swift UI charts is if you hold it, then it shows you what value you run. So if I hold it and then drag up, then it keeps on going four, five, six, seven. And then wherever I want, let's say I want the middle of the data and I wanna see what data point that is, then I can just hold it and then we can see that it's four. So there we go. Now, wherever we drag it, then it'll show the data point. And then we can also change this data. So let's say we say two, 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 10, six, and then one. So this is pretty weird. It should go just, it should keep on having a line and then it should go very up and then very down and then all the way down. So then let's run that again and then let's check out what it looks like. So there we go. Yeah, like I said, it just keeps on going straight at two, then it goes to 10, then to six and then all the way down. And then, like I said, if you drag it, then you can see all this is two, then it goes up to 10, six and then back to one. So there we go. Our Swift UI charts library will, it'll see what data we have, and then it'll put that into a line graph and then run that. And then obviously the title we can change, but that's very simple. So now that was very simple. That was just like our first line chart. I'm gonna put a spacer here so that it doesn't look bad. It has some space. 
And then now we're going to create a different type of line view. So in, like as you can see here, this it looks nice, but it's very small. So how we can make it bigger and more detailed, because as you can see, there's no like scale to see how much, what value you're at. All you can do to see the value is to drag it. But if we want to have a scale or an actual graph, then we can make a different variable called line view instead of line chart view, now it's line view. So again, this is still a line chart. It will still have all of the same attributes, except now it, it's an actual graph because it has a scale. So then again, I'm going to say data is, and then in an array, let's use the same data, data, 2, 2, 2, 2, 10, 6, and then 1. And then title would be equal to second line chart. I'm going to say line view this time because it's a line view. And then let's stop this and then run it again. And then hopefully now what it should do is have a graph. There we go. So here our line chart view is the exact same. It's 2, 2, 2, 6, 10, 0, or 6, 0. And then the second line view, now it's much more spread out. So it's bigger, it's full screen. And as you can see, it has a scale. So it says 1, 3.25, so right here would be 2. And then 5.50, 7.5, and 10. So as you can see, the top is at 10. So this is accurately represented data. So now you can see exactly, and you can pinpoint where your data is. So here you can estimate that this 2. But again, if you hold it, then you can see the data. So here it's 2 then it goes up to 10, and then 6, and then 1. But it's shown a little bit differently, and it looks cool. And then again, like I said, it's there's a scale so you can pinpoint exactly where your data is. So there we go. Now we successfully have a line view and a line chart view. The line chart view very, being very simple, and the line view being a little more complex because it has a uh, scale now. So as you can see, the scale. Now let's kick it up a little bit notch. So now let's actually use some attributes and parameters because right now we only have the data and the title parameter, but let's add some more so that we can change up the looks of this. So this time I'm just going to comment out these because obviously we already saw them. And then I'm going to add another spacer here. And then now we can add our line chart view, but this time we're going to make it look nicer with some attributes. So I'm going to have a line chart view, and then here. Now, as you can see in the inputted attributes, here we can add a data and title, or we can add all of these attributes. So I'm just gonna click that. And then inside of this, first of all, data, I'm just gonna add some one, two, six, 10, two, four, nine, just random data. And then for title, I'm going to say, changed graph and then for the legend now a legend is basically like just under the title it's just like a little subheading so for legend i'll say legend yeah just i'll just say legend and then for style now we're going to take out this because we're going to add the styling later so this style attribute it's basically like css except in swift so here, we're just gonna take that out because we'll add that later. Then form equals CG size. So what is this? This is basically just the size of our graph. So we can change the size. Right now, what it is, it's a medium. So I'm gonna say chart form dot, and then we can add small, medium, extra large, or large. So I'm gonna say extra large. So chart form dot extra large. And then now it should change color if it's working. And then after that rate value is int, we're gonna take that out because that's not needed. And then value specifier, that's also not needed. So we're gonna take that out. Then drop shadow, right now, by default, it shows a drop shadow, cause you can see here, but let's just take it out so that we can see what it looks like without a drop shadow. All right, so there we go. And let's check this, why is it giving there? Oh, charm form, chart form. Okay, there we go. So now it changed color so we know it works. So now let's check out this graph that we have. So we have a line chart view, same as what we had right here. And then the data is just some random data. The title is changed graph. Now we have a legend. So a legend is just like a subheading and then under the changed graph, it should say in small text legend. 
Then form is chart form dot extra large, which means it should be pretty big now. And the drop shadow is false, just so that it looks a bit different. So let's stop this and then run it again. And then since we uh, commented out these, it should only have this one. And it's at the bottom because we added this spacer. I'll take that out later. So here we can see we have change graph. And then down here you can see the legend. And the legend is legend because that's what we inputted. Then again, it's 14% because that's the default. We can change that later. And then we have our graph, which has all of the random data. And now it's much bigger than regular than what it was before, which is what the extra large size does. And as you can see, it looks much better in my opinion right now because it has no drop shadow and it looks much bigger. So it's not just like a tiny box with a tiny thing inside with a tiny line graph inside. And then same as before, you can see all the data. So there we go. Now we've, at, we've added some more parameters to our line chart view so that it looks a little bit better. Now, first of all, let me take out this spacer and add the spacer over here now. Spacer. All right. Now, what we're going to do is we're actually going to add some styling so that we change up the looks very much with all of the colors and whatnot. So I'm going to take out this and then let's just take out the spacer. We don't need it. And then here, I'm going to have a line chart view. And then inside of that, we're going to have the same the parameters and then inside of data i'm just going to add random data at this point zero yeah zero and then title we're going to say styling chart and then for legend we're going to add legend again you don't have to input all of these if you don't want to add a certain parameter other than data and title you can just take it out so then for style First of all, I'm going to take out the value specifier and the drop shadow. And you know, I'll just keep all of these. So form is chart form dot. Let's just say large this time. So large and then write value is int drop shadow is bool. Let's say the drop shadow is false because in my opinion, I like it better without it. And then the rate value is basically. So see how it's 14%. That's the rate of change. So if it goes up 14%, this is where we would add that. So right now, as default, it's just 14%, but we can change that wherever we want. And if we were making this dynamic, then we would add that as a variable instead of just an integer. But here, let's say we want it to be 60%. Then we can just make it 60, and then it should say 60% up. And then it also works for negatives. So then now, the last thing we have to input is the style. So to add styling, we're going to say chart style and then inside of parentheses, as you can see, it has all of these stuff. So let's just add all of this. So first of all, background color, and then we can change all of these parameters with all of the colors. So let me go back to our app pair slash chart view GitHub repository. So here you can see that it has all of these colors. So these are the gradient colors. So these are the available already gradient colors. And then there's obviously just regular colors too. So we're going to be using these straight from the GitHub repository. So for background color, I'm just going to say color dot. And then now whatever we color we want, it'll add it in Swift. So color dot, let's say we want the background color to be, mm, how about we'll say blue. And then the accent color is just the line color. So let's just say, let's make that red. Oh no, color dot red, color dot red. Then gradient color is just the color of the line now instead of the accent color is the down. So the gradient color is the line. So let's actually add one of the get gradients. So here we can add create our own gradient. So here it's under the gradient color struct. So here I'm just going to paste in this. So we have our gradient color function and then start color and then end color. So start color. So we'll say the start color will be color dot. Mm, how about red? No, let's do blue. And then the end color will be color dot purple because I really like the blue to purple gradient. So now what it should do is the line should be from blue and then it should end at purple. So it'll be like a gradient. Then the text color is the color of the title. So then let's say color dot black because we want it to actually show up. Then legend text color, let's also say color dot black. Or no, you know what? Let's say color dot red so that it shows up different. 
then drop shadow color. Since we said the drop shadow was false here, let's make that true just so that we can change the color. And then let's say color dot orange. This is gonna look really weird. And if we were creating a professional app, you I would not recommend doing all of these random colors. But just to show you the contrast between these and to show you that you can actually add your own co colors, I'm going to make them like this. So then let's save this and then let's run it. So now we have our random data. Title is styling chart. The legend is legend. And then here, the most important thing about this line chart is the styling. So in the styling, we have our background color is blue, accent color is red, gradient color is from blue to purple, then the text color is black and red, then the drop shadow color is orange. So this should look pretty interesting. So let's just stop this and then run it again. And let's see it. And whoa, yeah, it worked. So as you can see, this looks pretty weird, but let's just try it. So here we have the accent color is red. And then the gradient color, the starting is blue and then the ending is purple. So here you can see the purple, here's the blue. So that worked. Then the text color for the title is black. The legend text color is red, as you can see that. And then the, obviously the drop shadow color is orange, as you can see all around. And th then the background color is blue. So there we go, that worked. So now, as you can see, you can create your own custom colors and styling for your line chart. And then, like I said, the chart form dot large, it's a little bit smaller than extra large, but it's bigger than the regular. And also, the last change that we had was the rate value. It used to be 14, I believe, but now it's 60 because we added 60. So it says 60% up. So there we go. We've successfully styled a line chart view. So the next thing we want to do is a multi line chart view. So for now, what we did was so far, we have only one line chart. And as you can see, the data is like this. And whoa, that looks cooler with what we added here. See, if you hold it, then it like goes up. So anyways, so far what we did was we only had one line. But let's say you want to compare the, compare two different like growth rates. So then what you would do to compare those two different growth rates would be having multiple lines in the line chart with different colors, let's say. So let's actually do that using Swift. So let's just comment this out and then we're going to have another line chart view. So, but this time it's not called line chart view. It's called multi-line chart view. So there we go, multi-line chart view. And then inside of that, we can just say data title, all that. But this time it's a little bit different. So as you can see, you can see it's a little different. So let's just add the title first, multi-line. Let's just call it that. So now for the data, since you're going to have to have multiple lines, we're going to have to have multiple datas and multiple colors. So because we want to make it look different, so we would have multiple colors. So we're inside of this array, we're going to have a parentheses for each line. And then inside of the parentheses, we would have the color and the data. So let's add the data first. So let's say the first one will have one, two, three, four, five, six. And then the color will have to be a gradient. So gradient color dot, and then let's create our, uh, let's create our own gradient color. So then gradient color, we don't need the in it. We'll just say that start color will be color dot. Let's say we want to make it red to purple colors dot purple color dot purple all right and then let's copy this and then let's just make a comma paste it so let's say we want the second line to be uh more growth so faster growth so then we would have maybe one three five seven nine and then ten And then gradient color, instead of that now, we're going to have blue to, let's say, green. Obviously, this isn't going to look that nice, but if you're going to make it in a real life scenario, like I said, you're going to have it different. And then let's say we want the last one to be super fast. So maybe 1, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. Oh, why is that like that? Okay, let's delete all that. And then the gradient color, now let's make it maybe orange to pink again this is probably gonna look weird but it's okay at least we can distinguish between them so that's our multi-line chart view 
So we're going to have three lines and you can have up to like one, two or three lines. And inside of each line, we have different data. So the first line, which is red to purple, that will have one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's pretty staggered data. Then the second line, it'll be faster. So the growth will be faster. It's one, three, five, seven, nine, ten. And then that would be blue to green. And then the last line will be 1, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. So it's even faster growth. And then that will be orange to pink. And then again, the title is just multi-line. So let's test this out now. So let's stop this and then run it again. And yeah, it says build succeeded. And hopefully we see it. Yeah, there we go. That worked. So as you can see, all of these are starting off from one. And the first one, which is uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, is just red to, I believe, purple. Yeah, red to purple. Then the second one is from blue to green. So we can see the blue here and then the green here. And then last one is orange to pink. So there we go. That worked. So we successfully created a multi-line chart view with three different lines with three different datas and all different colors. So in this video, we used the Swift UI charts library to create all sorts of line charts from just regular line charts to graph charts with uh, scales. And then we changed up the attributes and then we did styling on the line charts. And this was just line charts. There are so many other charts we can use just in the same library, Swift UI charts. And I will be making another video on bar charts and pie charts, which is in Swift UI charts too. So stay tuned for that. Thanks very much for watching. If y'all had any doubts, please comment down below. I would love to help you out if you're stuck with any line chart questions or issues. Please like, subscribe, all that jazz. Until then, you can learn anything.